Or, which I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a video I mean, game person. But. I mean, it made me get back into it. I was like, man, I got to play some video games, dude. Yeah. They're fun. You no, know? it was great. Yeah. I, I love the movies like that. Awesome. So. But anyway, that kind of like sold me, you know, that sold me on this photography lifestyle. When yeah. I was in school, I tried doing like uh, headshots and still photography and things with people. And it just wasn't, it wasn't me. So. Uh, I kind of branched off into like I loved doing this documentation, and so that's why I, in my major, I ended up with, you know, photo documentary photography as my major. Yeah, wanting to travel around and tell these stories just with, you know, architecture or uh, honestly, my senior portfolio was about animal documentation. And, oh wow! And research, and so I kind of. What kind of animals were you documenting? Um, what is I, that? I went, I had a good relationship with the San Francisco Zoo, and so I went and I kind of followed this, like, one gorilla around. Whoa. And just kind of thought a little bit... Like, so, like in the... In not, no, 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 like, okay. outside, from a safe distance. I'm like, yo, sir, you're crazy, bro. No, <laughs> but uh, it, it was it was really interesting and kind of, like, it had me thinking about, like, animal psychology and going down this rabbit hole of, like, what are they thinking? And yeah. There are animals in the zoo, like, how... Like, this gorilla looks Do so sweet. Do they communicate see differently? see it in his eyes and you like look so sad but anyway that's yeah. uh that's what i i was very into for a long time yeah when i left college. what made that switch from like, like people to from from to just, things that couldn't talk back <laughs> no 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 just from um you know you go to school for this mm-hmm. and then at some point you change right oh sure career path so when did you know that this was no longer your passion um did you start like doing it and not wanting to do it? Did you kind of lose passion for it where you're like, uh, I, so I, um, I, I went through a pretty intense experience in college, which Uh like right after I graduated kind of shut things down for me. Yeah. Um, and had me focusing on different things and I just didn't really, want to be involved in photography anymore um i I went home and i tried to do it and i tried to do a few uh like one-off projects i actually told one of my dear friends as her wed as her wedding gift from me like i would shoot her wedding for free and so we did that and i have to say that was like icing on the cake to like never do it again oh yeah it it was the worst yeah i'm sure I i respect people that can shoot weddings like on the regular basis yeah, so Yeah, I mean, much. you're dealing with... It's like being at a bar. It's a nightmare. And you're the entertainment. And they're yeah. like, hey, get over here. Take a picture of me doing this. Right. No, no, take another one. It's like, yeah, it, I've heard it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not great. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that kind of... I was like, I, I really don't need to pick up my camera, <laughs> camera again for a yeah. long time. Um, Did you try to sell them at that point? Or were you like, you know what? I'm just going to keep these for later. And- you know what? Actually, I did. I sold my camera that I'd had from like age 18 to, to 27. Like later on. Yeah. Later on, I tried to sell my cameras. Um, when Jason and I were like super, super broke. Okay. Um, and it was it was a little devastating that I walked away with like only $200 yeah, or something no. like that. Honestly, to this day, like, you know, when you're a kid, you get, you have old video games. Yeah. And you're like, oh, maybe I should go sell these. And then they're like, all right, we'll give you 10 bucks for all of it. And you're like, this is worth way more to me emotionally than that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm sorry. The nostalgia factor is worth way more. When your parents were broke as fuck and they still had enough money or made enough money to be able to buy you that thing Mm -hmm. for, for your, for Christmas or whatever it was. Right. Um... Are you working in restaurants at this time in, during college? Uh, I was. Yeah. yeah. So I worked at this family-run restaurant, which was a total disaster. Um, <laughs> it was it was a uh, two sisters and and the parents, and they were running running this restaurant. And one of the sisters and the mom were like worst enemies, and the two oh, sisters hated each other. And it was yeah, bad. I'm sure plenty of people relate to working in a family-run restaurant. That is the family drama is. Just dominating too much yeah so you're just there and they're yelling at each other oh, and you're exactly. like i'm just trying to get paid they would push each other during service oh and then our paychecks would bounce sometimes it was it was awful yeah it was truly awful okay and it finally a couple years after i left i heard that it burned down and i'm sure that was something to do with like insurance Did you say, money or okay 
I thought you said a couple years after I left. I'm like, wait, you stayed there for a couple years? No. Oh, good. <laughs> no, no. I was there for, I was probably there for about a year and a half. Okay. Because in college, you're yeah, like, I, mean, I have to who focus cares? on school. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Why would I want to look for another job? And I'm sure Just that age, job. it's funny. You know, you're yeah, like, right. oh, God, I get to okay, work at this crazy whatever. place, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and yeah, I, I fell in love with bartending there, actually, in Nixology with one of the sisters. She pretty much taught me most everything that I know and little tricks that I still use to this day in, in Truffle Shuffle when I'm giving lessons on classes. It's a lot yeah. of the same things that she taught me. And huh. it was just super, super impactful. And she was this wonderful artist, and we connected a lot. Um, and and I kind of walked away from that, being really interested in mixing drinks. And I did that in my spare time after, but I never really went back to to bartending as as my position yeah. in a restaurant. You just that. found it a hobby. Yeah, like I want to go out, I want right, to buy nice right. alcohol, I want to mix it, I want to. Okay, exactly. Got you. Yeah. Um, and then. Did you sort of feel yourself kind of falling in love with it a little bit, like romantically? You know, when you when you first fall in love with the food game and sure. cocktail and all that. I loved the... There's something about the tradition in European wine that I had that feeling with. Okay. When I thought about families that do the same thing over and over again, and even in Italy, it's like... You know, very common, you know, expression or way of thinking is you don't drink your wine. You drink your father's wine. Yeah. Your children will drink your wine. Whoa. So you're, when you're making this, it's like, it's so much bigger than yourself. And just having, you know, having that approach to beverage is something that I feel like we don't really have here in the United States. And, and that's, that's something I, I really loved. I, I had a lot of plans on traveling when I was younger, and I thought I was going to go and study abroad in Italy uh, for a long time. And so that Italian culture always always kind of drew me in um, from, like, art and on a wine perspective. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think just the beauty of standing in the middle of a vineyard and being part of something that's bigger than yourself is, is what I had a romantic kind of, like, love connection yeah, to. Yeah, very cool. And, um... Are you so you're in school and you're working in restaurants, mm-hmm. right? So at some point, you have to make the decision of like, I need to go. Mm-hmm. Did you know that you didn't want to go into photography, uh, like as you're graduating, you know, like while you're still in school, or did you still find it passion? Like, were you still passionate about it? Uh, I was still, I was definitely still passionate about it. So I think um, I can actually, I can tell you the exact day that I uh, kind of fell out of love with photography, but mm-hmm. it was, uh, it was May 5th, 2015. Yes. And at this restaurant that I was working at, someone that I worked with, I, I was raped by someone that I worked with. Okay. And... I was two weeks away from moving back home and I convinced friends of mine that I worked with to just adjust schedules so I didn't have to see this person, which, you know, at the time being, that's, that's the most creative way I could come up with like dealing with that solution. Yeah. I didn't, it didn't cross my mind to quit my job because I was young. I didn't really have any money. Yeah. Um, I was I was leaving, I was moving home in a little bit, but that sort of slowly um it kind of deteriorated my love for photography and anything that I was involved in at that time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it that's I can't even fathom what that is to go through. And uh first of all, I want to say thank you for being honest. No one, you know, I didn't ask you to say anything like that and the fact that you're able to say that is, I'm sure, lifting some sort of weight off of you. And yeah, you know, uh, you know, to- it's really hard. And I think, you know, I think there have been plenty of women, especially in the hospitality industry, that you know have been vocal about their experiences. Yeah, but uh, you know, I think it's it's kind of like never enough. I mean, you know, men go through a different sort of abuse in the restaurant industry, but yeah, um, yeah, there's. 
three out of five women are sexually assaulted and less than one percent are reported yeah for sure so i think it's if anyone's listening out there you have i mean i always uh, and this has happened to me because you know i'm very close with um like i have a lot of very close female friends Mm -hmm. and you know they after a while when you're friends with with a female they'll tell you things that have happened to them and it makes me upset every time i hear these stories of these fucking asshole men taking advantage of situations and uh you know they're cowards and i used to get angry because i used to be like well why didn't you say something Mm. but again you get blamed for it you know and or like why didn't you fight back Mm -hmm. um but i'm here to tell you today that if i'm in the room and you are being fucking weirded out by a creepo fucking yell make a scene yeah because there's someone around that's that's gonna try to help you well nowadays you never know because all they fucking do is film right right but just know that if i've ever if i ever hear like a woman say no or be i'm fucking going over there i'm finding out what's going on right you right. know and i feel like more men need to step the fuck up and do the same thing you yeah. know in order for to protect our women here right so anyway that's um that's an experience that i went through that yeah. it really changed my life forever change the trajectory yeah and i you know i moved back home i was really discouraged i was engaged at the time actually to, yeah. to someone that that i went to kindergarten with and i was oh wow so <laughs> it was a long time yeah coming. sweethearts for a long time yeah um and basically you know being kids you know in our early 20s just it wasn't something that he could deal with i wasn't prepared to deal with yeah for sure so that relationship crumbled that i was super depressed and it just had me falling into a lot of um alcoholic tendencies that i knew i was prone to and i probably wasn't sober for a good like three years yeah i mean drinking every day every, like as soon as you every wake up every day every okay. day um and you Did, know that's that's the dark side of this yeah. but before that really got extremely out of control and I decided to get help. You know, I was working in a lot of restaurants in Southern California and, you know, I found, you know, beverage at that time, even though it was a crutch and it was, it, it was a way to kind of enable myself for my own drinking. I did find a lot of people that were willing to teach me about wine and educate me about wine and kind of send me down that different path. Yeah. And so I think, you know, me, you know, just like want, wanting to be drunk all the time definitely impacted my decision to get more into the hospitality world. Yeah. <laughs> but, but now, <laughs> you, yeah, you obviously. Gotta, it's a positive. You got a positive about <laughs> yeah, it. It's but, all good. But now I, you know, now I look back and, you know, I wouldn't, I obviously would not wish that experience on anyone, but I, so many, if I wasn't an alcoholic, I would have never gotten sober and I wouldn't have you know, everything that I have in my life today. So, so I worked at, uh, you know, a few different restaurants down in Southern California. One was called, uh, part of this urban kitchen group. It was called Cucina Enoteca. Okay. Um, and so I moved back in with my parents. Um, I got kicked out of both of their houses at a different point in time because of my drinking and, and then was just living with friends from work, working at this restaurant, doing great in work, but my personal life was a mess. Yeah. Uh, and then I ended up working at this small restaurant called The Dock in Newport Beach, which was actually connected to the Beverly Hills Wine Merchant. Okay. And so we had this tremendous wine cellar that I had access to. And I've learned more and more about, you know, small boutique wineries that have actually, funny enough, like, come up with at my time at the laundry. Or yeah. now I've actually met these winemakers from yeah, these, these small shuffle. wineries yeah. through Truffle Shuffle, which is great. Um, and... And so then finally, you know, I kind of hit rock bottom while I was working at that restaurant yeah. and finally decided that I needed to get help. And I was about 30 days sober when I had a manic, like a manic moment where I was, you know, I was just like uh, kind of positively manic. Right. So I was like ready to change my life yeah, and for reach sure. out. And uh, I applied to Alinea and the French Laundry and I heard back from both restaurants that same day. Really? Yep. And I took that as a sign that. I'm on the right path. I need to change my life. I and I moved to the next month. Heard that. So how did you pick between Alinea and French Laundry? I 
when I knew I wanted to live in Napa and I had a dog with me at the time and I thought, okay, I'm not quite ready to leave my home in California. Yeah, yeah. So I'll stay close. And, and I had caught myself, you know, making so many jokes that as my career progressed and 